Today I want to talk about hate or anger and how to deal with it because hate is a very poisonous emotion that I feel like affects people every day. Fuck, it affects me every day. Today for me alone was a, a day just f honestly filled with anger. I was a very angry, had a very angry day. Albeit maybe justified, still a negative and wrong emotion to feel. Being hateful or angry with someone is to say that your way of thinking trumps theirs completely, um, which can be so fucking destructive. Like, don't, don't you think the person you're angry at for like the action they did or the argument you're having, don't you feel like they're feeling the exact same way? Like that their way of thinking is correct and like that's the whole reason for the argument. Like that person thinks they're right in how they're acting or what you're talking about and you feel like you're right in how you're acting or you know how what they did affected you and what you're talking about. Like this is literally what anger filled arguments are. It's two people trying to get the other to submit to their way of thinking. Like it, to be hateful is almost to play the role of god like to be so passionate in a different differing opinion that you believe it to be like the absolute truth that it literally makes you feel a beast-like aggression towards another human like that they did something so wrong that you feel justified in these hate and like rage filled emotions which literally like hate causes us to literally demean ourselves like we act out of accordance with what we typically would do or with our nature. Like I feel like there's been so many times in my life where I've been just so angry and days after it happens or like I acted on that anger and I just realized like, fuck, like, <laughs> like I should not have acted that way at all. And it's out of anger because it's, it, it's not me. It's a, it's an emotion. It's very emotion that like controls your actions it controls how you feel it can be so fucking destructive and it can fuck it dude it can ruin relationships like i know so many people that have broken up like just over arguments just like on a different of a difference of opinion like just like weird resentment builds up and then you just have like a strange argument and it's just a massive lack of communication that just leads to nowhere it just leads to two people arguing at each other and just having these hate-filled, like, anger, rage-filled arguments that are just completely useless. Like, they get you fucking no- Sorry. Sorry. Somebody actually, um... Somebody actually complained about the amount of times they say, like, fucking when I'm talking. So, I will really try to remedy that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and it just ruins relationships. Like, even with parents and stuff. Like, in a past video, I said, forgive your parents. Like, imagine if you keep that hatred for them. Like, they're just- they're human beings. And so it's like you you create this rage filled hate that you still have for these people. And then it just progressively leads into resentment because typically this anger is never really dealt with because I feel like with these rage filled arguments, it's typically like, you know, may the best man win. It's not like real communication. It's literally just like trying to prove your point to somebody else. I feel like anger and hatred has been a thing that has really affected my life um since i know i talked about recently like stop or like to get to know yourself i had a whole video on why it's so important to understand who you are um i feel like that's also been a part of my childhood and or like a result of my childhood and my upbringing and trying to understand who i am um has also led to just like me being angry and frustrated in, in general because like I didn't have answers or I didn't like know who I am and then just like to be angry at kind of the world and it bled that that frustration and anger of not knowing who I am which is quite literally communicating with myself like who am I like sitting down and figuring it out but like you know what I didn't know better and that's fine I didn't know myself and I I, I didn't know any better I didn't know like how to cultivate that and that's totally okay you know, I was a fucking child. How was I supposed to know? But that that led to anger. It bled into my relationships. It bled into other things. Like, it it bled into 
anger for my parents. It bled into anger for my friends for not being able to understand me better. When all of these things could have just, I don't know, been solved with more communication. Um, I felt like a, a very hateful person, not in terms of, you know, like fucking going out and committing hate crimes or anything like that, but just like, I don't know, generally being angry, annoyed, um, hateful towards others and feeling very justified in that anger because my way of thinking was correct, which is, which is such a wrong way to think about it. Like unless someone literally killed, a, I don't know, killed a family member or did something so horrific that it, in that case, I, I, you know what I get, I, I honestly understand the hate in that scenario, but like, that's so, un, that's so not typical but hate is still so apparent in our lives. I, I just, I know for a fact it's apparent in mine. And, um, and it just, I, it just can destroy relationships. It's destroyed so many of my relationships in the past. Um, with my current girlfriend, I remember, um, we've gone through some, you know, really bad rough patches. And to be completely honest, since I've like kind of discovered myself and uh, taking a dive into stoicism. We fucking haven't had like, I literally feel like we haven't had one fat giant argument um, where it was just hate filled, like kind of like rage, anger on both sides. Um, maybe it's one side at some times, but then it's like, then it's like the other person acknowledges that hatred or anger um, and tries to remedy it by making the other person just like understand. It's like, no, 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 no. We're just going to communicate. We're not going to fucking hate each other. We're going to sit down and communicate with each other. Um, like I remember a specific time with my girlfriend, um, kind of near the earlier stages of we were dating and I had a insane business opportunity, like, like absolutely bonkers. It was, it was a winter break when she had been home. How long had we been dating at this point? I think we were probably dating for about six or seven months. Yeah, six or seven months. And um, I remember she came home for a winter break. I was working on this business and um, it was kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity that it was like something I really couldn't neglect if I wanted to take full advantage of it. And I remember she came down and visited and I just was like, I'm sorry, like we can barely hang out. Like I know we're dating and we're long distance and this is like one of the only times you get to see me like every four months, but like we will barely be able to hang out or when we do hang out, like I will be coming over at like nine or 10 p.m. We can sleep together and then, and I'm not talking the naughty way, okay? I'm talking literally just cuddling up. We can sleep together and uh, I will literally drive back to my house, which like I lived about 40 minutes away. And yeah, I'll drive back to my house in the morning, like early morning, I'll get up and then just get back to work. But like we can, you know, I'll come over and cuddle. And I remember at first she was like, okay, that sounds fine. Cause you know, I, I felt like I had communicated like, yo, this is what I'm doing. Um, huge business opportunity. I don't feel like I completely communicated the uh, the scope of work and like what kind of work I was doing. So she didn't really quite understand that it's like, no, this is a like fast paced business opportunity where it's like all hands on. Like, it's not like a job where it's just like, oh, pff, all right, it's 5 p.m. See you guys later. Like, no, this is like a an opportunity where like things are always moving like the fucking the time the, the clock doesn't stop like even if i go to sleep things are still moving so it's like so i need hands-on at all times i don't think she like understood that in, and it's not even her fault because i don't think i properly communicated it and i remember um she had started to get more mean um which obviously was a result of resentment because she obviously was not liking our current situation it was that, that, that like anger was bleeding into our relationship where she was being more mean to me. And I remember um, her complaining a lot, like a lot, a lot, calling me all the time, being very upset with me. 
and like all the while I'm trying to work on this business opportunity and I'm like getting really upset about the fact that like which is which is sad right this girl just wants to hang out with me and I'm getting upset about it and like just I don't know that's first of all that's super sad I'm gonna go chop up some cobble I need to farm up some cobble real quick but I remember just after you know it, it was about like two three weeks of just me barely being present and for some reason like not understanding why she wasn't okay with it like and it took that long for her to like kind of lead into a situation where she was saying like hey if this is how it's gonna be i honestly think we should break up hell no <laughs> like that is not what i want at all this is just something super important to me i really want to pursue it so in both corners of of our situations i am thinking wow she's so fuck she's overreacting like my thing is super important. I have to do this. She just doesn't get it. So that's me being the harbinger of correct thought when like, no, that's incorrect. Obviously there's two sides to a story. I don't know. People are allowed to have like different feelings and you're sp supposed to properly communicate them. And in her corner, it was like, I'm dating this fucking guy and it's long distance. The only thing I have going on right now is school. He has this business going on. I don't really understand it, but all I'm getting is that he doesn't want to fucking see me at all, right? And, and that's and that's hurtful to her. And I don't feel like that was properly communicated to me either. And so both in both corners, we're both creating this like anger environment, this hate environment where I, it's like leading into a vicious cycle of just hate. It's leading into a vicious cycle of resentment it was to the point where like our relationship which is literally my current girlfriend now was going to end at that point and i remember i'm i'm working hard like i'm literally staying up until two three in the morning working on this and then waking up like 9 a.m and then just like working all fucking day and then she calls me and it's like probably like 3 4 p.m hey i'm outside i live like 40 minutes away so she drove all the way down and she just we need to talk and i remember just sitting in the car and we were i literally feel like we were arguing for a, a for a full hour yeah this is this relationship is not gonna work out like one of us is gonna fucking say like all right let's just break up it was so juvenile me right now would not be acting in that way arguing to the point where like we're fucking yelling at each other and i get out of the car i'm like fuck this we're arguing so fucking much i got work to do she's obviously sad and obviously not happy with me i'm like jesus christ so i get out of the car and i remember walking home like getting inside and just being like all right just like just go home like i'm sorry this is just we are having such an awful argument and it, it, during this argument we're both it's not coming from a place of trying to understand each other it's coming from a place of trying to win right it's it's trying to win at this argument i guess i understand why they call it a fight right i mean it's it's two people projecting what they believe to be true in order for the other person to comply with their truth. And obviously, neither of us are going to just fucking go, oh my gosh, you're right. And listen, we both have um, our subjective realities set up in our brains of like, no, this is what the reality is and you need to understand. And it's both of us thinking this way and i remember she stayed out there for like another 15 minutes or so and then i was like you know what like that was pretty fucking unreasonable of me to just get out and close off the conversation i go back into her car we argue for like 30 more minutes and then um i remember it just kind of clicked it's not that she wants to be mad at me it's that she feels like unfulfilled in her in her requests Th then it became okay i need to actually ask and communicate what can i do to ease your resentment what can i do like can we create a plan like a compromise where i can still work on this thing but we can come to some sort of agreement that would make you happy because and then i just i fucking started bawling because i was like i started bawling fucking crying when this just clicked for me i was saying this is so important to me like this thing is so 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 fucking important to me and if you're we're in a relationship this is going to benefit you as well like we are kind of we're a group we're a team 
this is going to help both of us. I just remember fucking bawling. This was, I remember saying, like, this is so, so important. Just please, can you understand this for me? I will come to any type of compromise. Um, and I will literally let you just come over and watch me work so you can understand the scope of, like, what I'm doing in my current business. I don't know. I just, I, I remember crying for, like, it could have been, like, 20 minutes. And then we went on a really nice nature walk. It was honestly pretty beautiful. And then we came to a compromise. Okay, I'm going to work. I will come over a little bit earlier. I'll come over at like 8 p.m., 7 p.m. I'll try my best. I will typically stay for breakfast if we get up like at an earlier time. Because, you know, when you're hanging out with a girl, it's like, I feel like <laughs> if it's not like a situation where like you live together, um, I feel it's a, you know, it's going to be a we wake up at 10 a.m. kind of thing. And then we can plan, since it's winter, why the fuck don't we go snowboarding? And so that's what we did. I All it took was just the both of us coming to a compromise and trying to understand each other instead of literally th throwing our opinions and, or our subjective realities down each other's throats. Like, no, this is right. No, this is right. No, you're both partially right. Just communicate to each other and make the other person understand what you're feeling instead of saying this is how it is say i feel this way i'm feeling a lot of anger because this is so important to me instead of saying like you're being stupid because like what i'm doing is so important and you just want to hang out with me it's so negative and it's so it's honestly hurtful but another scenario i can think in my personal life which is still unfinished it's unfinished business is um god i hope he doesn't watch this video i know my girlfriend watches my videos but i and i know like my brother has no clue this channel exists but we're just so different it, there's been there's so much resentment with our relationship um that neither of us have like a real relationship it's the only reason we talk to each other or we even interact is because we're blood. If I had, if I honestly had a choice, if he wasn't like my brother, I would not interact with him at all. And it's sad, right? Um, but it is because over years and years of, of anger and resentment and just letting that fester and never talking about it. I honestly believe that if me and him sat down and i was able to just get out all of my resentment of just all the situations that he created that made me you know not respect him or honestly dislike him i i feel like it would be a three-day event and we'd be talking for 12 hours each day there would be a lot of ground to cover i don't know if i feel completely comfortable sharing all of it here um i'll share some basic facts we both live at home right now. I'm waiting to move out with my girlfriend at the end of summer, um, but I'm 22 and he's 27, okay? I pay rent. I paid the down payment on our house. Granted, it was like a FHA loan, so it wasn't like, you know, like a hundred grand or anything. And uh, yeah, I pay rent. I pay Wi-Fi for the house. I buy my own groceries. I cook my own food. I don't eat dinner with everybody because... You know, like, I, that's not my food. So I feel like, you know, I'm kind of paying my end of the deal here until I move out. Um, but in his situation, he he doesn't pay rent. He's never paid rent. He's 27. So it's like there's resentment there. Boom. I feel like he's taking advantage of my mom. We, we've had so many just experiences in my childhood, too, that just made me distrust him as a person. Like, one of the biggest things I can remember, there are two things. When I was probably about, I don't know. I don't even know when the Xbox 360 came out, but I was probably about 11 or something, maybe 12, maybe 13. I was definitely 12. It was whenever Skyrim came out and I'm 22 right now, so. And then I I, I bought an Xbox with a bunch of money I'd been saving up. I like got all these games. I remember I got like Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit, I think. No, it wasn't that one. I don't think it was that one. Anyway, I got Need for Speed. I got fucking Skyrim. I was... God, I was kidded. Let me tell you, I was kidded on the sticks. I was feeling so good. I was so happy about it. I had so much goddamn fun on Skyrim. Um, I never got to finish it though. I, to this day, have not finished a full playthrough of Skyrim. But all of a sudden, 
I stopped playing games for about two months. And all of a sudden, my Xbox disappears. And I'm like, what the hell? Where'd it go? You know, it, it's just gone all of a sudden. Um, I hadn't played for about two months, so... Hell, I could have just uh, not noticed for even a full ass month. Um, but I'm asking around. I'm like, where did it go? I have no clue where it would have disappeared to. Because I definitely moved it to storage. Not like, you know, anything crazy. But like, I have kind of a small walk-in closet. I definitely moved it in there. Um, just because I think I had gotten a PC. You know, a little bit of an upgrade. But I still had Skyrim on the Xbox. I wanted to play my racing game. And... I remember asking, I was like, do you know where it is? He, I have no clue, no clue. And then I found out it took two years for my mom to tell me he fucking sold it and bagged the money. Like, what the fuck? Hell no. That is just one of many examples. I don't even know what kind of crib I'm going to build here, but I am feeling a nice birch floor. That is what I'm feeling. Oh, it is a, it is a, it is a birch floored house okay sorry but yeah he fucking sold my xbox like that, that is just absurd um another example would be my dad got him a christmas present it was probably like a two thousand dollar laptop i was jealous i was jealous i had like an eight hundred dollar alienware pc and i was like oh my god that thing is beautiful i had like a 4k monitor and this was like, this was early days. This was like early when 4K just came out. Fucking like, sorry, same fucking a lot. And I know some guy complained about it. Um, 144 hertz. I'm like, oh my God, this thing is beautiful. Not even a month goes by. It, it, it's like, it's his first PC too. Um, that I'm like hyped up. I'm like, finally, we get to play games together again. Um, because we used to like run it on Xbox together in PS3 and then all of a sudden he fucking sells it for money and it's like dude what the fuck could you have even used that money for you're like 18 or 19 why the fuck did you even sell that I, I don't know okay I don't know I'm projecting a little bit um but I'm just kind of I I'm yeah, I'm. This is kind of like my diary, guys. Okay, I'm. I'm allowed to be a little imperfect. There's just. There's a lot of resentment there, and it would be a big project for me to repair that relationship. And but I don't. I don't know if it's possible, right? It's. It's gone so far, and we've grown into such different people that even without the resentment, I'm not entirely sure that like we would be friends. Um, so it's just tough. I like, I, I understand that you don't have to be friends with your siblings, but it would be, it'd be a huge project. And it's something that I really, even though I don't think that we would be friends at this point, I do think that it's something that since I have acknowledged this resentment and I've acknowledged this presence of anger and hatred that, you know, with my life's values and how I believe some people should live their lives. I feel like I have to do something about it. Um, even though, like, who cares if we're not friends? Who cares if it's not going to be like how it used to be? Um, at least killing that resentment and having genuine respect for each other, I feel like would be a huge step. And that's something I'm actively working on. And I just wanted to share with you guys. I don't know. I'm still a work in progress here, right? I'm no, like, there are so many people on YouTube who like professionals and actual therapists that talk about things or like psychologists i'm just i'm another one of the guys you know i feel like that's why you watch my videos i'm not perfect and i'm still a work in progress and i'm still working on myself these videos alone provide me a new way of thinking about myself and journaling instead of just writing down what i think i then have to i write down a small script that if i just read the script itself it would be like 30 seconds but then I have to take it and actively conceptualize it with like my, you know, I have to take my thoughts and what I've written down, process it into words that would be like 30 minutes of dialogue. So I hope you can understand, you know, me not being perfect. <laughs> I mean, obviously, right? Hate declares your thought to be absolute. You know, it means that you think of yourself as like the harbinger of truth. It destroys relationships. It's inappropriate, right? I, it's like a... 
It's a primal way of feeling about things. But I'm talking your day to day. I'm talking just like two humans trying to have a place in the world because of their subjective reality. They thought that to be true. So why not just understand each other? Why not fucking communicate, right? Communicating is the way. You need to understand each other. You need to know where both of you are coming from on a more intimate level and and not on an angry level, right? Don't communicate in the fact, in the way of, with, with hatred, don't communicate with hatred. I try to fully understand instead of going like my way is the right way. Well, what do they have to say? Let me actively think about how they're feeling. Let me genuinely actively think about it and compare it to the story I have in my head because that's that's the their correct story. This is my correct story. Obviously, it has to be somewhere in the middle. It almost always is somewhere in the middle. Um, but I mean, sometimes genuinely, you are objectively right. For example, if someone told me, no, hate is good. Like, you know, I feel like that is an objectively incorrect opinion. And if we had an argument, it wouldn't be like, oh, let's find a middle ground. It would be like, I am objectively right. Like, hate is not good. And then I, I would, and then from that point, you show them the way. You show them the way to truth. And then you forgive them for thinking that in the first place because they were misguided, right? Every, I, like, guys, everyone's just trying to fucking make it. Everyone's just trying to live their life. I know that I might have still current resentment for my brother but he's just trying to make it like he's just trying to be him he's trying to figure out who that is and he's just trying to feel content in this life right and and who am i to judge that and who am i to think of my way as correct okay that selling the xbox thing i've i i'm claiming full right to be angry about that okay <laughs> it's my fucking xbox but yeah, uh, I'm sorry if today's video is a little bit more messy. It's 3.43 a.m. It was kind of hard to sit down and record this. Uh, I went on a trip to San Diego to hang out with my girlfriend for about a week. Um, so it's probably, it's been about two weeks since I sat down and recorded. So it was just a little hard to get in the mood. I got a bunch of plans. I have a bunch written down that I'm going to talk about, but I'm definitely going to sleep right now. I have a video for you guys to watch. This is my new little routine that I've been doing at the end of the videos. I hope you appreciate it. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, here it is. Fuck them telling you go to school. Fuck them telling you, oh, get this job, do this. It's in your family legacy. No, you do you, okay? They don't, nobody can tell you shit if you make your own legacy. You make your own empire. You make your own standing. No one can tell you shit and you do it yourself. Make sure you motivate yourself. Make sure the only thing that you need to drive yourself is yourself. And you can get driven, nigga. It doesn't matter what anybody else tells you. Someone else's story maybe isn't the way that you would want to take on your story. Make sure you do your story the way you want to. Write your own damn book. Reach out to an old friend. Tell them you miss them. Reach out to a current friend. Tell them you love them and you want to hang out. Reach out to your parents. Tell them you love them. Tell them you miss them. But all right. Have a good one, guys. Bye.